nurses, nurse rooms here and welcome back to my channel. It's been over two months since my last update so I'm catching up with a new tutorial perfect for those who are interested in venturing hemodialysis nursing or to those who just transitioned to a new environment. In my previous videos I have mentioned regarding my resignation and my hospital dialysis nurse job but now I am back to the grind as a dialysis nurse reliever in a dialysis center. There have been a lot of adjustments and transitions that is why i want to share it with you guys starting with the dialysis machine since the current facility i am in is using Fresenius. so for today's video i'm going to show you how to set up and prime the bloodlines and dialyzers in a Fresenius 4800s machine as a disclaimer this video is just for familiarization purposes since there are different protocols that are being practiced in facilities and hospitals and what I am going to show you may not be the same as what you are currently practicing, but the principle is there. For this case, I am going to demonstrate a closed system priming with the use of a drainage bag. On the other hand, I would love to connect with all of you and I really appreciate those who take time to send messages for any concerns or questions. You can follow me on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. I'm also on TikTok and of course my website where I'll be uploading the transcript of all the videos here in YouTube but it's still a work in progress so please bear with me. Let's start. First, unpack the bloodlines. It consists of a venous line that comes with a drainage bag, a sealed transducer protector, an arterial line, the infusion line, and an extra recirculating connector. Let's start with the arterial line first. Place it on the arterial chamber holder in a reverse position for ease in expelling air and close the surrounding small clamps. Locate the dialyzer end and place it on the side of the dialyzer clamp holder. Insert the blood pump segment in the blood pump housing. Turn on the blood pump for it to easily glide inside. If the blood pump button is in red light, you have to long press the prime button to activate it. Then just start the blood pump and the light turns to green. Close the transducer line clamp and as much as possible, place it closest to the blood pump housing to lessen the chances of the transducer to get wet. Then hang the patient's end at the IV bag hook. For the venous line, let's start with the drainage bag by hanging it on the IV bag hook. Then attach the patient's end to it. Next, locate the venous chamber and place it loosely inside the venous chamber holder and close the surrounding clamps and attach the dialyzer end line on the dialyzer clamp holder. Connect the infusion end line to the saline port and spike the other end to the priming solution. Make sure the roller clamp is open and press the IV bag to assist in pushing the priming solution. Once it reaches the patient's end line, close the big arterial clamp. Then prime the dialyzer end part via blood pump. Blood pump is in red light, so long press the prime button to activate it with the default 100 ml per minute blood flow rate then start the blood pump. You can increase the blood flow rate and once the priming solution reaches the dialyzer end part, stop the blood pump. Before moving to the venous line, hook the dialyzer first to prime both at the same time. So connect the dialyzer ends to the dialyzer. Position the dialyzer blue up for ease in expelling air bubbles. Start blood pump. 
The Venus chamber should as well be positioned in a reversed manner to easily expel unwanted air. Then gently tap the dialyzer to expel the bubbles. The amount of priming solution to be consumed depends on a facility protocol. In my case, I usually stop as soon as the drainage bag is filled a quarter of it. Place the chambers in its proper position. Then don't forget to attach the transducer lines to the transducer pods. The transducer protector of the venous part is already attached, but for the arterial part, you have to make use of the sealed transducer protector and connect it to the line, then attach to the transducer pod. Close the drainage bag clamp and the blue big clamp. Detach and connect the venous patient's end to the arterial patient's end. Unclamp both big clamps, then start blood pump to start recirculation. Continue to expel air bubbles from the dialyzer. Following the doctor's order, attach the prepared heparin syringe to the heparin line. The heparin syringe pump ideally holds a 20cc syringe, but since I'm using a 10cc syringe, I need to tape it to prevent from falling and put something on top of the plunger for a secure fit. Press the down button to lower the syringe pump plunger and securely attach to the 10cc syringe. Once the disinfection is complete, the machine will alarm and display the 4800S screen. Make sure the bicarbonate and acetic acid solution are available. Then connect the concentrate connectors to its corresponding solutions, blue to bicarbonate while red for acetic acid. Press the test button to start T1 testing. Once T1 testing is complete, next step is connecting coupling to the dialyzer. Open the coupling shunt and connect the coupling to the dialyzer. Blue to blue, red to red. Properly place the venous chamber inside the air bubble sensor and thread the line into the occlusion sensor below it. Set UF for 300 ml in 6 minutes for UF rinsing or recirculation. Then turn the UF on. Once done, machine is ready to be hooked to patient. So that's it. Hope you learned something from this video. If yes, please don't forget to click like, leave a comment for video suggestions, and of course, subscribe to my channel. Keep updated and stay tuned as I take you with me in my nursing career. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.